Tonight on The Readout. First, I personally approve the decision to seek a search warrant in this matter. Second, the department does not take such a decision lightly. Donald Trump could reveal the details of the FBI search right now, but he hasn't. I wonder why. Now the DOJ is moving to make that information public. A new reporting on a subpoena from this spring for sensitive documents the FBI believed Trump was still improperly holding on to. Also tonight, new details on the armed man who tried to breach an FBI office in Cincinnati this morning. Guess where that suspect was on January 6th. Good evening. I'm Jason Johnson in for Joy Reid, and we begin the readout tonight with the silence broken at the DOJ over the FBI search of Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. After three days of allowing Donald Trump and his allies and conservative media to control the narrative of what transpired, Attorney General Merrick Garland made this statement. Just now, the Justice Department has filed a motion in the Southern District of Florida to unseal a search warrant and property receipt relating to a court-approved search that the FBI conducted earlier this week. That search was of premises located in Florida belonging to the former president. That means those documents will likely become public, which would provide a window into what investigators were looking for at the property and what crime they believe may have been committed, as well as what was actually collected from Trump's Florida residence. Both of these documents were given to Trump's lawyers on Monday and could have been released by Trump at any point, but he chose not to. And the reason we're probably going to see those documents, well, we can thank Donald Trump for that. The department filed the motion to make public the warrant and receipt in light of the former president's public confirmation of the search, the surrounding circumstances, and the substantial public interest in this matter. Meaning, had Donald Trump remained quiet on this, which we know he probably could do, these documents would have remained sealed at least for a while longer. In today's filing, Garland basically told Donald Trump, pull up, <laughs> writing, quote, the former president should have an opportunity to respond to this motion and lodge objections, including with regards to any legitimate privacy interests or the potential for other injury if these materials are made public. The federal judge who approved the search warrant has set a deadline of 3 p.m. tomorrow for Trump to make any objections. Trump tonight is continuing to say his team was cooperating fully and that the search happened out of nowhere. He did not indicate whether he intends to fight the notion. Look, Garland also went full Lady Tyrell when he made it clear that he personally approved the decision to seek the search warrant. Tell the Donald it was me and that he didn't take that decision lightly. Upholding the rule of law means applying the law evenly, without fear or favor. Under my watch, that is precisely what the Justice Department is doing. All Americans are entitled to the even-handed application of the law, to due process of the law, and to the presumption of innocence. Just hours before Garland spoke today, an armed suspect tried to breach the Cincinnati FBI field office, flashing an AR-15 style rifle and firing a nail gun at personnel before fleeing and engaging in an extended standoff. That suspect was eventually killed by police. Let's bring in NBC News senior reporter Ben Collins for some breaking news on that story. Ben, uh, this is, is disturbing. This seems clearly connected to what happened on Monday. What do we know about the man that attacked the FBI office in Cincinnati right now, other than the fact that he's dead? It is clearly connected uh, to what happened on Monday in the words of the man who uh, did this shooting. His name is Ricky Schiffer. He was uh, at the Capitol on January 6th. Uh, there are photos of him at the Capitol um, uh, that we know are him. And I just want to read you a post that he uh, a, a bit of a post that he posted after he tried to file uh, fire a nail gun into the FBI field office, but before he went to a cornfield and got into a shootout with police. He said, uh, well, I thought I had a way through bulletproof glass, and I didn't. If you don't hear from me, it's true. I tried attacking the FBI. It's one of those things that he said. But in the days before this, a couple days ago, he was talking about how this is a call to arms and time for combat, and there's no nonviolent solution to this. And also in May, here he is responding to Marjorie Taylor Greene, 
Congresswoman Green, they got away with fixing the elections in plain sight. It's over. The next step is the one we used in 1775. It's that sort of thing um, from this kind of guy. That's what you're hearing all over the Internet. This guy went through with it. Uh, he uh, was at the Capitol on January 6th. Ben Collins, thank you so much for that update. Let's bring in Joe Weinbanks, former assistant Watergate special prosecutor and co-host of the Sisters in Law podcast. That is a very good podcast. You guys should listen to it. Michael Steele, MSNBC political analyst, former RNC chairman and host of the Michael Steele podcast. Another very good podcast to listen to. And Charles Coleman Jr., civil rights attorney, former prosecutor and MSNBC legal analyst. I hope you get a podcast soon. Jill, I'll start with you. Um, this is disturbing. Um, we, we, we've talked about the rising tide of white nationalist terrorism. We have talked about the danger that the Republican organization has become as far as fostering this kind of behavior. What is your immediate reaction to uh, this attempted terrorist attack on an FBI office in Cincinnati? Everything about it is terrifying. And I feel that I am no different than anybody else that we have reasonable grounds to be fearful of people who have serious weapons and are deluded into believing that the election was stolen, that there is a reason that they need to take a tax now, when in fact, if one pays attention to the facts, there is not a single shred of evidence or fact to support anything that Donald Trump probably has ever said, but certainly has ever said in connection with January 6th or the search under a lawful warrant of his home. And you said something that I found very interesting, which was about how this was um, the Democrats weren't responding, that Garland hadn't responded, that Trump has had his say. And it reminded me right back to the Mueller investigation when Barr made a press release, made a press conference, he took control. He said, oh, this says that there's no collusion, no obstruction, right. when in fact, that's not what the report said. But yeah. by the time people spoke out saying that wasn't true, the message had already been sent. And first impressions are very hard very to hard change. So, change. So definitely Garland definitely should speak hard. up more often. But Michael, you know, one of the things that concerns me uh, when we see this kind of attempt to terrorist action is the way in which these people are directly encouraged, not just by Donald Trump, but other members of the Republican organization. There's a tweet that we've now have verified of, of this guy communicating with Marjorie Taylor Greene. And she was like, oh, you know, people are saying it's 1984, but it's more like 2016. And he's responding to her. Look, this guy clearly thinks that he was the Winston Smith in 1984. He's more like Fredo Corleone. But the fact of the matter is there's a lot of guys like that running around this country talking openly and blatantly about going to their local shop and picking up guns and attacking government officials. Where do you think the responsibility falls on the party or what passes sometimes as a party for Republicans as far as censoring people who are in engagement with folks who engage in this kind of activity? 